got 237 days until next season. We got a full tank of gas, half a box of donuts. It's early and the nation is waiting. Hit it. They want to get you addicted to that stuff. That's why they make the first one good. Is that with the philosophy of the angel cream donut? Got to nail the first one, man. Got to nail the first one. That's what she said. Welcome to the Sunday Drive, everyone. <laughs> okay, welcome back to the Sunday Drive. It's been a while. It's been a little bit. It hasn't been that long. We, got, we, we, we snuck in one in. Yeah, we, we snuck, snuck one in. Yeah, your button hooked me. I know you're going to button hook me. <laughs> Buffalo Bills have a lot going on coming into this offseason. So let's talk team, right? Yeah. Let's talk salary. Let's you know, quickly Maybe overview some like salary that. cap, the CBA that's coming up, players that are going to be free agents. Uh, we're going to highlight the offense and defense on uh, Tuesday and Thursday separately. So you'll be covered with specifics there. Uh, let's just take a look at the team as a whole. Yep. What? some glasses because Bill's future is so bright dude you all gotta wear shades I'm gonna have you sing for an entire episode what the hell was that uh, movie back in the 80s oh that one the, thanks for helping me out the, no 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 so the Bills, right now the Bills are projected to have about $88 million in cap space. That is not figuring in a few things, right? All right. That's not figuring a possible increase in salary cap. True. The last four years, the cap has increased between 8 to 14%, which is huge. So let's, just take a, let's just take a 10%. percent we will say the cap increase is 10%, right? That's another $20 million to the salary cap. Now, every team's going to get that. Honestly. Right. So, really, you take a look at overall space. It makes the number look good, but the truth is everybody gets it. Yes. So, everybody moves up the chart the same. But that puts the bills to about $108 million in salary cap space, which is just a crazy Ooh. amount of money. Crazy. What you're saying is the rolling over of previous year's cap is was a smart move. Yeah. Okay. Well, it All depends right. on when you're looking to pay a player. Right? And the Bills definitely have players that they can pay coming up, which is what, why this is important. Well, and I think it's fair to point out the fact that um, the CLC Hawks did this for years. They would roll over cap oh, because they knew they were going to have guys doing that. They end up winning a Super Bowl. The Oakland Raiders did the same thing. They cleaned house. They took a big, you know, dead money bomb one year. Yep. It hasn't worked out. So it can go. Right. But I do like Oakland's line. Oakland's line is pretty disgusting. I'm not going to lie. I love their line. You look at those guys across that line. No, I'm sorry. You can't. You can't even tell me their line's good when you can't even name a running back for the last three seasons. Come on. The, the crux of that is this: the, you guys will like new regimes will come in. They'll clear house. Right. They'll get their guys in there. They'll take the dead money bomb for right. one year, try to stay afloat, and then they'll start getting their guys in it. The Bills seem to be in that position now, right? Because this is the first time that Bean is going to actually have to re-sign guys that were drafted by McDermott. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So you're finally in the talent retention portion of your franchise. Yes. Right. And that's where some franchises fall apart is they keep the wrong players, they pay the wrong players, they let the they let other players walk that they shouldn't. Very true. So the Bills are going to spend about eight million dollars this year in their draft. So there's a draft pool, right? You have to have enough money in your draft pool prior to the draft. Which is very to sneaky. Pay for Not players. Many people know that. Right. So all, since all the salaries are all pretty much, you know, already written in stone, you have to have enough money in your salary cap to account for the players uh, based on the picks that you have prior to the draft. Mm -hmm. So the Bills are going to spend about eight million dollars in uh, draft pool money right now for year one. So of the 108 that they're going to have, they're really down to $100 million in space. Ooh, I like even numbers. Very good. Yeah, so it's right at, right about $100 million is the space they're going to have. Now, the question is, do they spend it? Because they don't have to. You got some holes coming up, right? We're going to talk about Jordan Phillips on the drive through episode. So you got Jordan you got Jordan Phillips coming up, right? Yeah. You also have Hyde and Poyer. They're going to be coming up on deals relatively soon. But who else is Who else, What other secondary guys are are they paying? Is he mad that they uh, activated Jaquan Johnson for a playoff game when he hadn't been activated all season? 
Is that what is that what he's mad about? Well, is Be- are Beasley and Brown mad that they activated Duke for a playoff game? He's been activated a few games. Well, but... that's what I'm saying, right? So, I do. Side note: There's no such thing as a meaningless game in the NFL. No. Duke Williams earned himself a, a roster spot in the playoffs because of a meaningless game. There's no meaningless games in the NFL. But weren't people saying that he was being saved for the games? You're saving no. Duke for the playoffs. You're not saving Duke for the playoffs. Yeah, I'm just saying what people are saying. No, I know that people are saying that, but the truth is, you play the players that are good and healthy. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. So you have Jordan Phillips, Spencer Long, Lorenzo Alexander is obviously gone. Kevin Johnson, who was the first free agent they signed, was just on a one-year deal, so he's gone. I'm signing that boy. Shaq Lawson, Quentin Spain. Uh, Adrian Wado, who was on IR all season. I have to imagine they're going to bring him back because we're on mm-hmm. IR all season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Gore is on a one-year deal. Then it turns into a mix of just a bunch of guys. Maurice Alexander, uh, Julian Stanford, Kurt Corman, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Legit. Ooh. That's a weird one, right? That's a weird one. Contingency I, plan two on year Phillips. Two-year deal. Contingency plan on Phillips? I signed Luke at first. Disagree. Well, I mean, disagree. Because if you sign him first to a two-year deal, then you can risk if if losing Phillips. If you don't sign Phillips, then Lugit's going to want more. Do you sign Lugit because you think you're going to lose Shaq and Phillips? You're picking up Vic Beasley, so it doesn't matter. I want to I want to warn you. To the flashback of, well, what if the Bills draft Josh Allen? And I said, it's a, it doesn't matter. AJ McCarron's the starter. It won't matter. I just want to flashback to that moment right there because similar things have been said in, this, in these vehicles. Yeah. And um, the last time I was th- I was this, this, the last time a defensive player that I mentioned over and over again annoyed you this much. Was it was Star- 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 right. So yeah. I'm, I just, there's a history here of hits and misses. <laughs> What year is it? Why did Jumanji end up in every episode? Because I can't believe what we're doing half the time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> then you get into the list of what I think is really the most interesting part of this. You're restricting their exclusive rights free agents, so those are guys who are on the last year of their deal, but the Bills can retain their rights if they want to. Mm-hmm. So they're only free agents if the Bills say so, right? Mm-hmm. Isaiah McKenzie, restricted free agent. Dean Marlowe, restricted wow. free agent. Jason Clune, exclusive rights. Levi Wallace, exclusive rights. Robert Foster, exclusive rights. And uh, Isaac Asiata, exclusive rights. So, briefly, the deal with those guys is if the Bills want to sign them to a league minimum contract, they offer that to them? The exclusive rights. The exclusive yeah. rights. And right. they either have to take it or they sit out, but then they don't accrue a year if they sit out again. Right. They have to either sign the contract or the team has the option to release them. If they choose not to release them, the Bills still retain their rights. Yeah. So, weird. yeah, it's a weird rule. It kind of forces players to sign. A player's stupid not to sign it. But restricted is almost like a transition tag, correct? Yeah, restricted free agents, what happens is they get, we'll use Isaiah McKenzie as a perfect example. So you place a round tender on them. And what that round tender does is it guarantees them a contract, right? It's a, it's a contract dollar amount. Okay. So it's a first round tender, a second round tender, or an original round tender. And what that does is if another team wants to sign that player, they have to give you that pick in order to sign that player. Okay? So Isaiah McKenzie is a perfect example. What was he drafted? Fifth round. So if you're going to do an exclusive, or if you're going to do a restricted free agent on him, you're either going to pay him at a first round level, at a second round level, or you're going to pay him at a fifth round level. And if a team wants to sign Isaiah McKenzie, they have to give you a fifth round. What do you think the Bills will do? fifth round tender they're not putting a first or second round tender on Isaiah McKenzie no way no but here's the here's the deal and here's the thing that kind of gets lost in the mix recent history Ryan Groy they put a second round tender on him because they didn't know about Eric Wood right they put a fifth round tender on Gillis Lee yep the Patriots took it right okay so the Patriots took it the Buffalo Bills used that pick to draft Matt Milano Uh The, the thing in there is the fact that you can only use those three Right. You only first, have those second. three. Right. First, second, and original round right. drafted. And you don't have to use all of them. But for that upcoming season, that's what the player gets paid. Mm-hmm. So for all the fifth round draft picks in the 2020 draft, um, that's what that player will get paid right. if you put a t- that tender on it. The Bills only have two restricted free agents this year. Dean Marlowe and Isaiah McKenzie. 
Marlow was not drafted. Marlow was undrafted, which means you can only use the first or second round tender on him. See, that's the little that's, uh, high, that's, high. that's that's the that's I'm the not putting one. the first or second on Marlow. Yeah, no way. Just sign him. Right. You're either gonna let him walk or you're gonna sign him. Right. Two years but four million. Isaiah so McKenzie. Take it? Two years four million. Dude, it'd take two years at one point five each. Okay. So how old is he? He's twenty eight though, he's older, isn't he's he? He's older. Okay. That's what I mean. You yeah. got you got leverage there. Yeah. So Isaiah McKenzie, if you're not going to re-sign him long term, you might just fifth tender him because I mean Isaiah McKenzie is a guy that you probably only want on a one year deal because there's lots of guys that come out every year in the draft that can do what Isaiah McKenzie does. Are, are there though? I think so. Well, what if you want to cut ties with Roberts? We got Ray Ray McLeod on a future contract already. He already tried to replace Isaiah McKenzie once, and you keep bringing the guy back. <laughs> Raven McLeod is the cat that came back the very next day. I don't, I don't see why you would risk trying to lose McKenzie, though, since he's been a, such an in- integral part of the offense. Because you've got Ray Ray, you keep bringing him back. I know you got Ray Ray. You know Ray this Ray. team's a believer. When they pick somebody up, bro, they, they have serious anxiety over letting people go that they have drafted what we've come to so far just to recap really quick the, the cap is projected we don't run 100 percent. bills that currently have 88 million the 10 the percent increase in the cap would take the bills to 108 million right their draft class will cost 8 million bringing them down to 100 right these are now, all estimates right yeah, these these are all all, we're believing the cap's going to increase 10%, right? That's not guaranteed, but we're believing it should. So turning the corner, the only two restricted free agents that the Bills have are McKenzie and Dean Marlowe, and they have exclusive rights free agents in Foster, Kroon. Um, uh, it was Foster. A lot of guys. A lot of yeah, guys. Okay. a bunch of guys. But they signed a bunch of guys as well already to future mm-hmm. reserve contracts, which is fine. I mean, a lot of teams do that now. They can negotiate right now with Trey White. They can negotiate yep. right now with Matt Milano. They yep. can negotiate right now with Deion Dawkins. Right. Yeah, these Dude, guys that these guys, guys are guys on rookie the deals. Yeah, I think it's important to highlight that those are guys that are they're still on their rookie deals. So it's not mm-hmm. like you know, you can you can talk extension with a with a veteran player at any time, right? Yes. So with the rookie deals, you're not allowed to do it until the January of their third year in the deal, right? Okay, so, so let's say Trey White, Milano and Dawkins were all drafted in 17. Same, right. Were they? Mm, were they all the same? Trey year? Yeah, they were all the same year. That's crazy, right? You think about that? All right, it's so they crazy, were drafted man. the same year. So crazy. the 2017 season, 2018, and we just finished the 2019 season. The January after that is when they can talk to them for contracts. Mm-hmm. So the whole, if you extend him, you should extend him. You can't even talk to them about mm-hmm. that. Right. Now, I'm sure there are discussions behind closed doors sure. with the agent and all that. But um, you look at what Xavier and Howard has gotten in the division. Mm-hmm. You look at what Gilmore got in the division. Yeah. A lot of those teams, they'll do that to mess with players in the division. Like, Uh for example, the 49ers tried doing that to the Seahawks when they signed Kaepernick to a $100 million deal. And they wanted to force Russell Wilson. They want to force Russell Wilson out of the division. That all being said, you're going to spend money on Trey White that Jordan Poyer is going to see. And Micah Hyde's going to see. Right. And Kevin Johnson's going to see. Yep. Would I like those four to come back? Absolutely. Um, could there be other options out there from college you can bring in? Uh, no question. No doubt about it. If there's one thing that McDermott and Frazier can do is they can find corners. They sure can. We, we touted – we didn't tout Whaley for a lot of things, but we touted him for finding Linebacker. linebackers yep. everywhere. Yep. But those guys, um, they could find corners. But you're not going to find a Trey White in this draft. No. 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 You may find a Kevin Johnson. You're not going to find Hyde and Poirier that work together as well as they do. So what do you do? Is this the year that you extend those guys as well? I mean, would you extend those guys an extra couple of years? No. Because they're, they're nearing 30 now. I mean, yeah. The clock's running out on this defense. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. No? I don't at this point. Right. right. What if they hold out? You already drafted Jaquan Johnson. Just as long as they both don't hold out, you're fine. <clears throat> that's what the, I really think that's what the Bills feel. Because you still have Kirk Coleman in your back pocket, who is tailor-made for this defense. Yeah, he's all right. I'm just saying he's there. He's, like, there. he's yes, a guy. He he's a guy that can direct traffic back right. there. Does it... He can yeah. play Hyde's role. I don't think he can play Poirier's role. No. Two very different roles. The two very different I, I would put either Neil or Marlowe in, in Poirier's role. I agree with that. Um, yep. 
I agree with that. Which is what which is what they do, and all these teams do that is they cover themselves as mm-hmm. far as that goes. If a guy wants to hold out, I don't think right. they'll hold out. Um, but we have two guys riding in a car have said how much he's grossly underpaid. He must know it. Hyde must know it. So I don't know what they're going to do with those guys. But at the time, right? So football is a game of you know you're paying for the performance that you're going to give under the life of the contract, right? And the goal of a team is to guess low on that number. You want yeah. to pay less than the performance that they give you. Mm-hmm. And Jordan Poyer did not have a lot of people banging down his door to come sign. The Bills gave him a, a very, very, very good contract he for the playing, production that he had in Cleveland. He was playing next to Tyshawn Gibson in Cleveland. That just shows you what a mess Cleveland was. Tyshawn Gibson was pretty good mm-hmm. at one point. Mm-hmm. He's playing next to Poyer. Those two guys, you have those guys as your back as your backmates. Mm-hmm. Now, did Poirier have a season compared to 2018? I think he had a better season last year. I agree. Yeah, he had a better season last year. But now you need to equate what's the reason that he had a better season, right? Gotta Maybe you're asking him to do more. That's 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 probably why he wants to get paid more. Maybe. You're not asking me just to fill a role this time. You're asking right. me, okay, last year when Milano got hurt, I dropped down in the box for you. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that gets his nose dirty. So. I think he's a valuable piece to the to the defense for a lot of uh, for a bevy of reasons. You know? Yeah, I don't so. I don't think you extend him. Okay. I don't think you extend him. Uh, Hyde, I think you extend. I do. I think he's. I Is think he up that, first? I think that no, Hyde's up second. So it's Poyer then Hyde. Poyer's up in twenty twenty one. Poyer's up in twenty twenty one. And then Hyde's up in twenty twenty two. Yep. So if you're they're, gonna, they're the same age though, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think they're both 28, 29. Yeah, I believe so. So I think. From a leadership standpoint, Hyde is more of a leader on the team than Poyer, and this team will pay for leadership. So I think Hyde stays, Poyer goes. But that's not even this season, right? That's not this season. If we're, we're Again, we're just talking about this season. You finally have an opportunity to determine whether Deion Dawkins is your franchise left tackle. Make the decision, yes or no, because now you can re-sign him. You need to determine whether Trey White is an aberration or one of the best corners in the league. Is he a product of your system, or is he one of the best corners of the league? If he's one of the best corners in the league, you pay him. If he's a product of your system, then you let him ride out his deal, you pick up his fifth-year option, and then you franchise tag him until you find his replacement. It's And that's the path that you can follow. McDermott already made that mistake, though, in Carolina. Well, not really him, but they the got rid of, they got rid of Josh Carolina. Norman. Right. And that secondary fell apart. Yes. I mean, Bellum they ended up doing well with Bradbury eventually there, but that took him a year. He had yeah. to get past his rookie year. Well, it took it what he went four ye- four games the season that McDermott became our head coach. The season prior, they went like four or five games. With that I can't disgusting remember. Disgusting secondary. It was, it was an awful secondary. Well, because they just draft. They all they did was they just drafted guys across the board. You called it, man. I mean, you, you don't like when I do this stuff, but you called it. You said that. The you know the castle's going to come crumbling down soon in Carolina, which is why probably Bean got out of there. Mm-hmm. That's Look what's it. happened. Yep, brick by brick, Bean's yep. torn apart. I'm okay with the list of free agents right now. I think you could lose Spain and be okay. I think you can lose oh. Shaq and Phillips and really Spain? be okay. Yeah, I think you could Spain? be okay. Spain, that yeah. refrigerator. I think you'd be okay. Oh, you lose Spain if you're picking up a tackle. Why? Because you think Ford's going to play guard? Why not? Put Feliciano next to Dawkins. You know how much better Dawkins would be with Feliciano next to him? Maybe Feliciano no, I, can only. Turn I personally right. think that because I think Feliciano's better. I know than you Cl- love Spain. You love Feliciano. That's probably I, that's the jersey I should have got. I should have got Feliciano. But if I do, he's gonna have three stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Point being is this: I you want to slide Ford down to guard? I think he'd be an All Pro. You want to put him at tackle? He could be mm. one of the top tackles. Jack but Conklin's free agent. I don't know if they're going to break up that line. That line's looking pretty Tennessee? nice now, isn't it? Tennessee, you're going to pay for Jack Conklin. Didn't I tell you? Yeah. We laughed when we beat them because they were they were kind of bad you with pay, Mariota. You pay but... for people that get playoff experience and playoff wins. Jack Conklin has playoff wins now. Yes. A couple, actually. For Michigan State, right? At least for Michigan, Michigan State. State. I like Conklin. Yeah. A lot. Yep. But I, they're not giving up on Ford right away. I smell an episode. Well, we know this because they didn't give up on Dawkins. Right. They're not giving up on Ford. Not going to happen. Draft a left tackle in the draft. Sign Conklin. Move Dawkins and Ford to guards. <laughs> I'm, I'm, solved. I'm kidding. Ta-da. <laughs> Where we sit with this is you're not as comfortable with the Bills going into this offseason as I am. 
I'm comfortable with them losing almost every free agent on that list and saying, I'm good. Do you know the I'm g- really okay with it. You know the gif of uh what the heck's his name? John Stewart eating popcorn? Yeah. That's how I am. I would disagree. For this point only. I think the infrastructure is there at one Bills drive. Okay. So if they lose guys, that means they were comfortable enough with losing them and they feel confident that someone else can either play on par or better. They've shown that. They, they've found guys that you're like, who? Mm-hmm. They signed Quentin Spain late in free agency. Nobody, yeah, nobody wanted, wanted him. him. Guy didn't give up a sack the entire year Everybody, PFF. Yeah, it's, they, the, around the league, everybody thought Quentin Spain was a product of Taylor, Taylor Lewan. Lewan. So that's, right. that's fine. But you put him next to Dawkins and Morse. He could have been a product of Morse. You never know. Right. Uh, the way that guy pulls for being a a house, a, tra- a tractor trailer. I mean, you found value in guys. Feliciano was one of their first signings. Like seventy percent of his contract was guaranteed. And you're like, what? That's not really a bean move to guarantee no. that. Look at the production you got out of him. Yep. They drafted Cody Ford. Um, he struggled. A lot of rookies do. It's not a big deal. Not everyone's Taylor Lewan, Quentin Spain, Joe right. Thomas. Right. That's, that's what happens. So and then you signed Morris, which was your biggest signing. Time out. Did you just say not everybody's Joe Thomas, Taylor Lewan, Quentin Spain? No, I didn't say Quentin Spain. Did I? Uh, you did. You put Quentin Spain. Did you put Quentin Spain in the no. same category? No, I, not everyone's Taylor Lewan, Quentin Spain, Joe right. Thomas. No. Right. I, I can't remember who I said now. You're killing me right here. Quentin. No. Wait. Who's who's the freak? For the Colts. Quentin Nelson. Quentin Nelson. Okay. I may have said Spain. You did know. say Spain. I I'm was sorry. like, wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, time out. I'm sorry. That I meant Quentin Nelson. Okay. All right. Jesus. Jeez. I'm not, I'm not. There is a gas leak in this car. Heart palpitations. Shut up. <laughs> some, some guys will have these growing pains, and that's fine. David Bakhtiari. Always hurt. I love Bakhtiari. Always hurt. No, he's not. Always hurt. He's not always hurt. Comment section on YouTube says it's always hurt. Hard to argue with the nation. I don't. Hard to argue with the nation. <laughs> you do. I I love that the roasting of me is about to start very soon with yeah. these episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I love it. I will say uh, that my perspective on this is a little bit different, and, he, and here's why. It's not that I'm worried about losing any of the people that are free agents, right? There's some people that I, I, would, be, I would be bothered if we lost, right? Yes. But... Free agency this year is very different than free agency last year, and here's why. Last year, the Bills were a rebuilding team. They're not a rebuilding team anymore. Now, other players around the league see the culture in Buffalo. Okay. Buffalo is going to become a target. We talked about this before, that Buffalo was on their way to becoming a place that people wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Those guys who are from small towns, they'll want to be in Buffalo. Those guys that grew up in small towns in in Texas – they grew up in small towns in, you know, these southern states. They're going to love Buffalo. They're going to come to Buffalo for a free agent visit. And they're going to say, this, this, I, this is a mick. This is better than where I was. Mm-hmm. It's kind of big city, kind of not big city. This is a team that wants to win. They just made the playoffs. This is a team that is on the path. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to spend the next four years. Buffalo, I think, is a bigger free agent target than I think a lot of us are giving them credit for right now. But with talent like that comes – Money. Bill's got it. They've got it. Oliver, yeah. Allen, Edmonds. Milano, Mil- Trey. Well, I'm saying Allen. On the horizon that you're yeah. going to have. The guys that you drafted. That's going to be. Oh, boy. Dude, you got the collective bargaining agreement coming up <laughs> That's after the next season. Part. You do not know what's on the other side of that wall. You just don't worry about it this year. Go win a Super Bowl. Sign players that will help you win a Super Bowl. That's the goal. Don't sign players that will help you get better. We're past that now. So given everything that we've talked about with some of the, you know, the free agent, you know, Buffalo's a place to play. If, you know, because a lot of these GMs are creatures of habit. So if he signs Trey, yeah. the first possible chance that he can, which it's, it's been a few days. They're probably still negotiating. That's fine. I hope they re- I hope they buy out the last two years of his deal. I really do. All right. If they do that for the essential – one of the most important pieces of their defense, one of their only, only all-pro player. You think they do the same thing with Allen? 